Hey y'all, here's a lesson on James Brown funk rhythms. I was a guitar player in his band from 1999 to 2006. I played about 400 shows across the world with James Brown, so I'm going to show you guys the stuff that we did on stage and some of the most famous songs, and I'm going to go into more in depth into further lessons later on, but this is going to be kind of a quick, fun one. I'm going to do the songs Make It Funky and Hot Pants, maybe one or two more. Okay, so the first one we're going to talk about is Make It Funky. Now, Make It Funky is going to use this D7-9 chord. So that's like a D note here, 5th fret of the 5th string, 1st finger on that 4th fret of the D string, 4th string. And then we have this 3rd finger that bars all 3 of those bottom strings on the 5th fret. So it ends up being 5-4-5-5-5. Five, 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 five. So that is kind of the James Brown funk chord, the D7-9. You can call it D9 for short. Uh, in the jazz and funk world, people normally know what you're talking about. If you're talking about a D major 9, you would have to say that. That would kind of make it another thing. But the 7 chord is very common in blues and funk and stuff, so it's just kind of known that that's what you're talking about if you say 9 chord. Now, the Jimi Hendrix chord, what I refer to as the Jimi Hendrix chord, is like the raised 9. So if we were to look at the scale to explain the nines, what those numbers mean. Those numbers always just mean the note in the scale, like the interval of the scale is added to the chord. So if we looked at the D major scale, well, by that point, we've played eight notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now the next note of the scale would be that note. So if you notice, that note right there on that second string, that is part of this chord now. A normal seven chord, dominant seven chord, would be like five, four, five, three. But this one is five, four, five, five, and then another five on the bottom. So that's why it's called a nine, is because we added the ninth note of the scale to the chord. It's part of that chord now. So that is like the James Brown funk chord. So we're gonna get funky with that one. And the rhythm on this one is, is real cool. Um, it's gonna be like, There's a few things going on there. So the first thing is these are, think of 16th notes over this whole measure. 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. All of these strums fit into one measure of four sets of 16th notes for each beat. So that was 16 different things happening. So for each beat, there's four things happening. 1 E and a, 1 E and a, 2 E and a. It's kind of like that kind of counting. It's kind of hard to do it and say it at the same time. But um, what we got is... So our first beat is 1 E and a. Uh, what I'm doing there is I'm doing a staccato chord. So I'm making that chord stop as soon as I hit it with my left hand. Just by releasing the pressure off of those... I'm not coming off the string, but I'm just taking the pressure off of holding those notes. And that makes the chord stop. And if you keep your fingers on the string, then you don't have any noise or anything. And you can make those chords stop at will, however you want, you know, whatever you want. So first thing, the first beat we're doing is one E and a. Uh. And what I'm doing is I'm holding my fingers. All my fingers are touching strings, so there's not going to be any note noise when I'm doing those second and third things. So it's like one E and a. Uh. So that was a down stroke and then a up and down with chicks without the chord. So the first downstroke had the chord. The next two, the up and the down, have muted notes. And then the last up of that beat was another chord. So it's like one E and a. Uh. So let's look at how the second beat works out. So it ends up being a thing where you're like chord, chick, chick, chord, chick, chick, chord, chick, chick, chord, chick, chick, chord, 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 chick. Okay, so that's the whole pattern. So if you think about it that way, it's weird because you're going back and forth, and sometimes the one that you hit is not the same, you know, it's not a down or an up like it was before. It shifts around, but that's what make it makes it kind of extra cool, you know, extra funky. So we got So let's talk that through one more time. We're gonna have chord chick chick chord chick chick chord chick chick chord chick chick chord, 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 chick.
Okay? And that's going to be actually the same rhythm for the song Hot Pants. Now, Hot Pants, I think they had they did that with an E flat. And a lot of um, a lot of James Brown songs, they actually recorded in D, and they changed, they raised the pitch to make it sound like it's in this higher key. They really played it over here, but it sounds like this. So all this, the vocal notes and the solos and everything have all been jacked up to another pitch by by in the machine, you know. So that's kind of why James Brown sort of sounds like Alvin and the Chipmunks a little bit sometimes, but. Um, they just decided that it made the song sound more lively and more just more exciting or something, you know. So let's look at hot pants. Let's let's do the exact same rhythm because we're gonna be in E flat this time. So we got six five six six six. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to get a loop going and I'm going to show you this other riff. Now that could be like um, the later live version where it adds a little bit to it. Um, things kind of develop over the years and get, you know, little fancy things get added to it. The original might have been more like. Without that extra thing. So the other one was. So what we're doing there is we're doing 11 to 13 hammer on on the D string. And then we're doing the second and third strings. We're going to bar those two on the 11th fret. And then we're going. Same thing, but back to that 13th fret of the D string. So. And that one was that hammer on. Then the 13s down here on the second and third string to the 11s on the second and th third string. So. So let's get that loop going and I'll be right back. We'll check it out. Okay, so there's the loop of that rhythm part down here in the sixth fret. This would be a E flat seven nine. Now I'm gonna bring in that other riff here. That's like the original version. Now here would be the more souped up later version. So now there's something else fun. There's a riff here that we can add. The recording of this was in E flat because they raised that pitch thing. And then they go to a riff off of C, that C note, third fret, A string. That kind of thing. So what's interesting is when we were playing this live, we played it in D, like they originally cut the record before they changed up the pitch thing. And we would do the riff in D as well. So it's it's interesting that you your the studio recording is like E flat for its basic um, key. But then when it goes to the riff, it goes down three frets or a step and a half to get to the C riff. <laughs> Which gives it some, you know, it makes it a little bit more interesting. Now we would do it like on the fifth fret. And 
when we do the riff, we go same key. Etc. So let's take a look at that riff there. We got three to two. We're gonna go back to that E flat one. So we're gonna have three, two, three, four. So that three was on the fifth string, two was on the fourth string. So part of a like C C triad. So watch that. So that's a tricky one. Bum, 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 bum. Three is on the lower. Five, three, five, three, six, three. So. So it's down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down. So it's one of those things where you're trying to keep your down and up picking very meticulous to keep the feel of everything right. So. And, and the downs and ups are dictated by where that those notes are within those 16th notes. You know, it's all about keeping a steady, like when you're strumming, you're picking stuff, you have like inside yourself, you're feeling this down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, like all the time. And you're just playing wherever the notes might be, that's where the, the stroke is. It's like if the note is on a down beat, if it's on the one, think about like a one E and a, if it's on the one or the a, uh, then it's a down. But if it's on an E or an AND, those are ups. So. And then there's a little ending with the G chord here. And if we were over here, keeping it all in D, Back into the song like we did it live when we were doing it live, we would go. That's how you could get back into it. But when we finish the song live, we would go. And that would be the live ending. So, like I say, it's interesting how things develop. You know, it started in this, started in D, but then it got pitch changed up to E flat. And then when they went to that riff, they went down to C. But when we were doing it live, it would be in D, it would stay in D, and it had an extra kind of tag chord thing at the end. Okay, so we're going to talk about one more song real quick, and then I'm going to have more James Brown coming up in the future um, very soon, but let's talk about Sex Machine. That's another fun one. So, same chord. That's why I call it the James Brown chord, is because a lot of his songs were based on that sound. That's like the funky chord, you know, the kind of happy, funky chord. This one, that Hendrix kind of purple haze sort of chord, that one has more grit to it. It's like more of a minor thing. I would say it's more kind of edgy, you know, especially put some fuzz and distortion on that thing. It gets crazy, you know, like a P-Funk type thing. So anyway, we're going to talk about Sex Machine right now. So we have this D7-9 chord, D9 chord, and we're going to go. So that right there, when you put that thing in there, that's the pinky on the seventh fret of the first string. That makes it a 13 chord. Now it's a D7913, but for short, you just call it a 13. My first night with James Brown, he came up to me and he said this, play that, son, play that. And I didn't know what he was talking about. What is that, an A, an E? Uh, I mean, had no idea. All he meant was, that's a one and a three. He meant, put the 13 chord thing on that. So all that mean, all that meant was just put that pinky down. You got that different sounding funk chord now. Just has a little different ring to it. And it can be used in a lot of funk settings, and he used it. I'm going to show you how he used it in Sex Machine right here. So we got. So that is the first part of Sex Machine. And sometimes we would play that, it seemed like, nine, ten minutes of just that, you know. And if you notice... You got this chicky chick thing going on. It's like it's steady, and that's how you keep everything in place. Doesn't matter where the chord is, you just get used to having that steady feel, and you just pop those chords. You make this these hand these fingers go in when you want it, 
and you know stopping the pressure when you don't want it so you can keep that chickity chickity thing going so here we go you guys want to try that with me let's check it out two three and Now here goes the bridge. We're gonna go up to the four chord, which is five frets above where we were. So that's the 10th fret. 10, nine, 10, 10, 10. So that's the G7, nine, or the G9. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna start with the 13 chord. We're gonna go. We're gonna pull it out for those last two. So, dun -up, dun -up, and then we're gonna go. And so that was just the same chords on the eighth, ninth, and 10th fret. Now, to keep it all in time with the stroking up and down, those are upstrokes. But what James Brown liked is he told us you got to play down. So he would like the attack to come from above sometimes on those things. So it'd be like. So sometimes things are moving too fast. We couldn't always do that. But he could kind of hear the difference and he would want you to play down. He would say, son, you're playing up. I want you to play down. So that would always be kind of a challenging thing. So where they really go is their upstrokes. But if he wanted you to do it that other way, you'd have to go. You know what I'm saying? So that, that'd be the playing down thing. And I think that came from stuff like... like a try me type of a doo-wop thing. I think if you were to do that like this. With a down up thing, I think it has a different ring to it. It might sound great to everybody, but you know, like he kind of felt like, I believe he felt like that when you attack from the lower notes of the chord, it has a different ring to it. And it does than if you hit from the bottom first. So he would like to be like, And I think he felt like you could control the you could control the attack and the sound of the chords better and make them sound more kind of uniform probably as opposed to when I go down up I have two slightly different sounding chords even though it's the same chord it's because of the attack where the pick came from so that's kind of why he would have us try to do some of that kind of down picking stuff That would have been the ups. Like when I play it now in my band, that's, I do the ups. It makes it easier. He's not there to say, play down, you know. But this would be the other way. So it's up to you which way you want to try it. But anyway, that's been a little bit of James Brown. And once again, I'm Damon Wood, and I played with James Brown for eight years. Played Royal Albert Hall, played Bonnaroo, played um, Glastonbury Fest played the Hollywood Bowl, um, played with Michael Jackson, played with Elton John. Uh, we had Slash on stage with us one night. So anyway, it was a great time. And thank you again, James Brown. He was the baddest, baddest cat I ever saw. And uh, so we'll see you next time. I'm Damon Wood. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And um, let us know if you have any requests, especially James Brown, because we're in that mood right now. All right, thanks a lot.